So I'm going to ask you what I think is an interesting question. Have you ever sat in a room at room temperature, let's say it's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and watched a glass of liquid water spontaneously have ice in the middle? And I'm guessing that you have never seen that. And I would say, oh, of course you wouldn't see ice spontaneously form, especially if the room is, is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, if it's above the freezing temperature of water. But my question to you is, why not? Because that does not seem to defy any of the laws of physics, the Newtonian physics, or even the first law of thermodynamics. And let's just think about how that actually could occur. Let's imagine a bunch of water molecules in their liquid state. So I have a bunch of water molecules in their liquid state. I'm going to do a good number of them. And they have some temperature. Remember, temperature is just about average kinetic energy. But each of these are going to have their own velocities, their own momentums. So they're all going to be bouncing around in different ways. And they have their hydrogen bonds between them. That's what gives, that's why water is, is it's liquid state at room temperature as, a, as opposed to a gas. So you have some hydrogen bonds between them. But I'm not going to get too fixated. Too fixated on that uh, just yet. Now, you could imagine they're all you know, jump, b bouncing around in random ways, but there's some probability that they uh, interact in just the right way that maybe this molecule right over here is able to hit this one in the right way, so it transfers most of its momentum to the faster molecule. And so this one actually loses some of its momentum, and it slows down. And just as that's happening in the neighborhood of it, one of, one of the other molecules is able to transfer most of its momentum to some other molecule, so it too, so it too slows down. So it too slows down, so they all have much smaller momentum. And then maybe this one, at the exact same time, is able to do it, so it slows down. So it slows down here. And then the other ones that, are, that, got, that got the momentum transferred to them, they're all moving faster now. So let's say that one got their momentum transferred to it. That one got momentum transferred to it. That one got momentum transferred to it. That one got momentum transferred to it. And this one got momentum transferred to it. And now these molecules right over here, they, their momentum is small enough, their velocities are small enough, that the hydrogen bonds, the hydrogen bonds really take over and they're able to start forming some form of a lattice structure. They're getting cold enough, you could say, to actually freeze. So they, these are turning into ice. Why can't that happen? What I've just described, I'm just talking about things colliding and transferring their momentum. I'm talking about uh, energy not being created or destroyed, so it seems to fit in with the first law of thermodynamics. So it seems like, theoretically, maybe it is possible for, for ice to spontaneously form. Or maybe another way to think about it, maybe it is possible to start off with a system that is fairly uniform. It has an average temperature here, but maybe a cold pocket could form by the rest of it turning hot. So maybe initially, all of the water is 70 degrees. So everything I'm showing you is a neutral 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But maybe there's some probability that spontaneously, I have no creation or loss of energy, but some of the energy from the middle goes, gets put into the outside, so it warms up. So let me do this in a different color. So maybe all of this water outside, maybe this is a top-down view of the water. Maybe all of this water heats up. Maybe all of that water heats up, and all of the water in the middle cools down. But they have the same total. They have the same total kinetic energy. So I haven't uh, created or lost energy. It's just happened to be that, that spontaneously, I was able to transfer energy from the middle outwards. And even as the middle got a little bit colder, I was able to transfer more and more energy from the cold, the cold water to the hot water. And it gets ordered in this way. This is actually, it feels possible due to uh, some of the, the physics that we already know. But some thoughtful folks, like these gentlemen here, this is Carnot, considered the father of thermodynamics, Kelvin, Rudolf Clausius, they repeatedly observe, well, you know, this doesn't seem to be happening in nature, especially once you get to the characters like Kelvin and Clausius. They're saying, hey, look, it doesn't look like we're, we're observing uh, a transfer of heat from cold too hot. And since we're not observing it, it let, let's just add our own second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics is really based on empirical observation. And the second law of thermodynamics, according to Rudolf Clausius, and I'm going to paraphrase his, is that we don't see spontaneous, so let me write this down, second, second law of thermo, thermodynamics 
He said we don't see a spontaneous transfer of heat from cold areas to hot areas. So second law of thermodynamics, so no transfer, no spontaneous. No spontaneous. You can in, we can do use work like things like refrigeration equipment to uh, make to make enter to make heat flow uh, from cold to hot and cool something down, but no spontaneous transfer transfer of heat heat from from cold to from cold to hot, and maybe I'll underline hot in orange right over here. And this was just really based on observation, because we don't spontaneously see this happening. We don't see the water just or randomly organizing itself into a hot region and a cold region, and getting so cold that maybe some of it will spontaneously freeze. What we do observe is if I were to put ice water in the middle of a room at room temperature, I'm going to see the other way. I'm going to see, I'm going to see transfer of heat from, let me draw the cup here. I'm going to see transfer of heat from the warmer regions to the colder regions. So if this is the if these are these are ice cubes right over here and and this is the water this is the water right over here we're going to see the transfer of heat the other way from the cold regions to the hot regions. Now, this was an empirical observation and it seemed to hold up to experimentation, but why do we actually see that? And it turns out that there is some super, super, duper, duper small probability that this could actually happen. And remember, in real systems that we're talking about, and thermodynamics is really the study of systems more than individual molecules that we're talking about. Any system we're talking about, we're talking about way, 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 way more molecules, way, way more actors than just three molecules here. We could be talking about, uh, well, if you look at the number of molecules in a glass of water, you're looking at things with, uh, well, you're looking at things with 20, to 24 or 25 zeros, depending on, on the size of your, your glass of water. So you're looking at a huge, huge number of molecules. And so statistically, and they didn't think about things statistically until Boltzmann comes along, but statistically, the odds of this happening are so low, especially when you're thinking about, you know, I'm not talking about just three molecules, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about way, way, way more than three molecules that you're just never going to actually see it. And you could think about this if we were to allow ourselves to look at the, the molecular level of things, to not just look at the macro level, you could see why this is. So if you, if you were to have some type of a container, let me draw a container here. If you were to have a container and you have, on the left-hand side, let's say you start with a bunch of molecules that are hot, so they have a high kinetic energy. So these are these have a high average kinetic energy here. These molecules. And on the right side of the container, you have maybe some molecules, and maybe they're the same type of molecule, but they have low kinetic energy. So their temperature, on average, they have a lower kinetic energy. They might have a few that have high kinetic energy, but on average, they have a lower kinetic energy. So we see that the we see that the temperature here is lower. So let me write this down. Right now when we're starting off, this has a lower, lower temperature. While the left-hand side has a higher temperature. Now what's going to happen? Well, these molecules, they, they can interact with each other. They're going to bounce into each other. The things with high kinetic energy, they're going to bump into the things with low kinetic energy. And all of these things are also going to get mixed together. But even if somehow you weren't mixing it, these things would be bumping into these and transferring their momentum. So as time goes on, you're going to have, you're going to have a system that looks more like this, where all of them are going to have more of a medium, or on average, a medium kinetic energy. There's still going to be differences in their kinetic energies, but they're not going to be divi divided in this way between left and right. So you're going to be, you're going to see you're going to see it all mixed in, and you're going to see and you're going to see that neither the left or the right is going to be have a higher temperature. And why? Do, and so what is the net effect? Well, we had a transfer of energy from the hotter molecules to the colder molecules. So that energy that energy that we're talking about that is heat. We use Q to denote the heat. We have a transfer of energy from hot to cold. It, it, it's statistically unlikely, very unlikely, bordering on impossible, but it, there's an infinitely small chance it happens, it's just that it won't be observed, that you could go the other way, but that's not what we see when we're talking about many, 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 
uh, not even millions, millions of millions of millions of millions of molecules, you're going to see the ones with the higher kinetic energy on average mix in and transfer it to the ones with lower kinetic energy. And so that's why they were able to say, hey, we don't see any spontaneous transfer of heat from cold to hot. It is always going from, it is always going from hot to cold.